This is a list of my top five games for Steam Deck. Whoo, that was quick. All right, let's go. Number one on the list is Hades. Hades is a hack and slash game where you use different weapons and abilities to move through different levels in the dungeon, and it's fun. What makes it such a good game though is how they've implemented the death loop, where every time you die, it changes the dialogue with NPCs and does a whole bunch of different things. I don't want to ruin it, but it moves the story along. And also this game is perfect for the Steam Deck because of how the game is designed. Each room is kind of a different level in and of itself. So after about 30 seconds to a minute, you can set the Steam Deck back down because you have an automatic built-in save point which is really great for the Steam Deck. Also it's a rogue light which means it has a bunch of random elements and that allows the game to have a ton of replayability. It's a seriously awesome game I highly recommend getting it. Number two on the list is Vampire Survivors. Now before I got my Steam Deck I did a bunch of research and was looking at the games that I thought would be the best for when I first got it and Vampire Survivors kept popping up and I'm gonna be honest with you I thought it looked dumb, or maybe not dumb, I've been a PC gamer my whole life, and so a game like that just seemed a little bit too, like, simple or easy or arcadey for me to actually enjoy. But finally, I picked it up and I got it, and now I see what people are talking about. It is actually a really fun game. The core mechanic is that you can only move. You only use your left thumb and you move, but you personally choose all your weapons and talents and items and things like that, and so there actually is quite a bit of depth to the game. It gives you this feeling where there's constantly more enemies coming and you're always feeling just the tiniest bit overwhelmed, and that actually turns out to be a lot of fun. But that's not even my favorite part of the game. My favorite part is that it's easily accessible for anyone to pick up. For example, just last week I went home to visit my family for Christmas and I was hanging out with my sisters, neither of which play video games, and I was able to hand both of them Vampire Survivors and within five minutes they picked it up, they understood it, and they were having a lot of fun. And they ended up going and grabbing my Steam Deck a bunch of times throughout the day and playing on their own. They actually ended up playing the game for hours each and I think that just goes to show, although Vampire Survivors is simple, it's a really engaging and fun game, but the best part is that it's accessible to new video game players, which I think is kind of fun. what's fun about the Steam Deck is that you can bring it around and kind of show anybody, hey, this is a video game, you could have fun playing this. And because of the Steam Deck's portability, you're actually likely to take it places where you might bump into people like that, like for me, which uh, was my sisters. <laughs> Number three, we have Elden Ring. Now, Elden Ring has been by far my most played game on the Steam Deck. I've got about 80 hours. And like I said earlier, I've been a PC gamer my entire life but there's just something so special about being able to bring a triple A massive open world game onto a portable device and it feels like you're cheating something or like something magic is going on. It doesn't feel real. Like I said, I was driving up to visit my family last week and when I wasn't driving, I pulled up Elden Ring and ended up playing about two hours in the car and that is the fastest time has ever passed for me in the car. The only bummer about Elden Ring is that it drains the Steam Deck's battery life like crazy. If I leave everything uncapped, which is how I like to do it when I'm plugged in, I only get about an hour of battery life but knowing that for this I capped the frame rate at 30 and then I ended up getting almost two hours which is not great I would love for it to last maybe double that because that's how long I would have wanted to play it in the car but if you really wanted to play for longer in the car what I would suggest you do is get an external battery pack and then you should be able to stretch the Steam Deck's battery life to much more than that. Number four is Pico Park, and this one is kind of funny, but because my sisters got excited about video games from playing Vampire Survivors, I did a little bit of Googling and I saw what kind of video games would be good for inexperienced game players and also is a good co-op multiplayer game and Pico Park popped up. So I ended up picking it up. It's a remarkably simple side scroller with simple physics and everything moves how you would expect it to move, but it had us laughing our asses off while we were trying to work together to solve these puzzles. And now that game holds a really special place in my heart. You can play up to eight players. I only played with three, but you just hook your Steam Deck up to the TV, plug in an HDMI cord, get a few Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, whatever controllers you have, and then you're good to go. It's super easy. We were playing immediately, and there's almost no learning curve. Number five, and this might be a surprise, but it's Call of Duty Black Ops 3. This game hit me right in the nostalgia. I haven't played a Nazi Zombies game since high school, which was like a decade ago, and the last one I was really into was Call of Duty Black Ops 1 one, the original one, and had this map called Kinoder Token. I can never say that right, but I know it's something like that. But I used to play that game with my friends all the time in high school. 
And then a few years ago, I saw Black Ops 3 was on sale, so I picked it up, but I never ended up playing it. But then when I got my Steam Deck, I was looking for games to play, and so I downloaded that one just to see if it would even work. And not only does it work, it works fantastic. And the best part is you can play split screen on the Steam Deck. I mean, I would highly recommend plugging it into the TV. Having one screen with two people looking at it on your Steam Deck is like kind of a nightmare. You can't see anything. But you hook it up to a TV, you get a controller, and immediately I was back to my high school days playing Nazi zombies with my buddy. It was seriously awesome. One caveat was that when you wanted to add split screen mode so you could play two player on the same TV, you couldn't use the Steam Deck's controller, you had to use the touch screen, and then you had to touch this tiny part of the screen, and for whatever reason, the touch screen, which is acting like your mouse, is inverted, and then as soon as you tap, the mouse moves, so it's kind of hard to do, but I promise if you just keep tapping and keep trying, it will eventually work. I've done it a bunch. One workaround might be if you got a Bluetooth mouse and hooked it up, then you could click, but that's kind of inconvenient. So if you want me to make a whole video about how to do that, let me know and I can do it. But once you make that work, you're playing split screen Nazi zombies with a buddy and it is a fantastic time. I highly recommend it. So this has been my top five games for the Steam Deck. These are what I've spent the most time playing since I've had it. But let me know what you think. I know these are kind of unpopular games or at least some of them are. Obviously Elden Ring is really big, but I'd love to hear what your favorite games are in the comments comments because I'm always looking to get new games and the Steam Winter Sale is going on, so I'll pick up a few. And if you're looking for more videos on the Steam Deck, check out the rest of my channel. I have a bunch of them. All right, peace.